Welcome to a dreamy display stand tutorial. In this video, you'll be transforming one of Graphic 45's matchbook boxes into this dreamy display stand. This is great for storing the coordinating mini album we'll also be making this month. But it's also great if you wanna take some of those battery operated uh, LED lights or um, a little tea light, a battery operated one, and put it in there and use this as a night light. You could also use it as a frame that you could uh, enter or change out the photos as well. This, of course, is a part of our Club G45 series. This is a volume 11 for 2019. And I'm Shari Philomahala. I'm gonna be teaching you how to create this easy peasy box, including this fun DIY lid. And of course, if you're not yet a member of Club G45, you can find out all of the details in the description below, or you can hop on over to our website, g45papers.com to go ahead and join but you can always create along with us just using the supplies you have at home. To go along this month with volume 11, we also have this beautiful accordion mini album. And both of these projects have been created for us by the lovely and talented Annette Green. So we hope you grab your supplies and create along with us. So for the first thing we're gonna wanna do when creating either of our projects for volume 11 is uh, you wanna see on our project sheet, it does note that we need to create the dreamy display stand before beginning our accordion album. Um, it's for two reasons. One, it's so the glue can dry on our claw feet while we're making our accordion album. And then the second reason is because one of the pieces for our accordion album um, actually comes from a leftover piece from our box. So from here you can see we cut out this frame and we use this leftover piece on the accordion album. So that is the other reason why we need to do our box first. That way you have enough paper for both projects. For step one we are going to remove our inner box from our matchbook box. So we have two pieces. We'll put the piece with the window to the side and then with our inner box we are going to just lay it on its side so I have one of the long sides towards me. And then you are gonna cut from your slumber C, you're gonna cut out eight pieces that are going to be a half an inch by two and seven eighths. And then you'll cut out four pieces that are going to be a half an inch by six inches. And then again, four pieces that are going to be a half inch by eight inches. So then using our easy runner adhesive to take off the lid to this, you want to see that um, our the top of our easy runner is going to have this nice little ridge for your finger to rest on. And then we're going to take two of our smaller strips and put some adhesive down on there and then these are going to go you want to make sure our box is going to be hollow on the bottom and the top will have this nice flat area so we want to make sure if possible when using those strips that our letters are right side up and then we are going to leave about an eighth of an inch space on either side so I've got one strip down, taking my next strip and I'll leave the placement about the same, an eighth inch on this side as well. And then we'll take our longest strips. We're gonna take two of those. And if you have any adhesive Going over the side, just brush that back to fold it over. And then making sure our words are right side up again, we're just going to find the center, keeping this flush with the bottom pieces.
like so. And then we'll take another one of these long strips and we'll do the same on the top. So this way we're maximizing our paper but still creating some nice extra dimension having the layered look. So instead of cutting a whole piece to fit here, this way we're just going to get the most out of our 8x8 paper pad that we're using. And voila! And then we will do the same on the other long side and then with the short sides we will use our shorter pieces. For step two, we are going to take Moonbeam Dance and we are going to cut out two pieces that are going to be eight inches by two inches. And then we're going to do two pieces that are going to be five and three quarters by two inches. And these we are going to adhere onto our box. So adding our adhesive. This is going to be equal distance from either side, both left and right, and the bottom. So there will be a gap at the top for right now, but right now we just want to focus on keeping our bottom right and left hand side borders equal distance, like so. And then we'll just work our way around the box doing the short sides as well. Next, with our stars aligned paper, we're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be eight inches by three quarters of an inch. And then using the scallop scissors, we're just going to create a nice little dec decorative edge. So if you've got scallop scissors, you can use those. Or if you have a decorative border punch, you can use that as well. You know, with the decorative border punches, uh, they can take out a little more than you expected from what you cut, so you might want to keep that in mind if you are using a border punch. And then we are going to just find our nice sweet spot where everything is lining up and our orange border is nice and equal all around. And then once you've got it where you want it, we can go ahead and burnish that down. And then we will do the same on all four sides. For step three, we are going to continue a similar look on the top of our box. And we are going to cut from Slumber C two pieces that are going to be eight inches by a half inch and then two pieces that will be a half inch by five and three quarters inches. Okay, so now to adhere these down, we want to be creating about an eighth of an inch border all the way around our white. So I'm going to put down my first piece just on the top, making sure everything is right side up. And then I'm going to just work around the edges. So now taking a one of the shorter pieces and then I'm going to work this down around and then just doing the same. So now I've got another long piece. Finding where it matches up beautifully and then pulling that along the bottom and then now I'm just going to match this up and pull it up the top so we have pieced together a nice eighth inch border all the way around. Final step of step three, we're going to take Moonbeam Dance and we've cut it down to eight inches by five and three quarters. And then this we are just going to find the center. Once you do, you can go ahead and burnish this down. Step four, we are moved over to creating part of our display box. So we're going to take our piece with the window cut out 
And then taking a unicorn fantasy, we've cut this to be six and a quarter by eight inches. And we are going to be cutting out the window here out of here. And how we do that, I've created a template, which you don't have to, but you can if you'd like. But I've created a template so it makes it just a little bit easier for you to see all of the dimensions that we will be tracing because they're not all equal. So from both the left hand and the right hand side, we are going to be measuring in to be one inch and th one inch and three sixteenths. And if you are using our project sheet, you'll see that um, the one that came in your kit is going to say one inch by 13 sixteenths. And that was just a, a bit of a typo. So be sure to do the one and three sixteenths. So we'll trace a line on both the left and right hand side for that. And then from the bottom hand side, we're going to measure up from one inch and a quarter. And from the top, we're going to be uh, measuring and drawing a line at seven eighths of an inch. So once you have done that, you can go ahead and trace out your rectangle and then we can go ahead and cut out that piece. So if you have a paper trimmer that you can pick up your blade and drop it where you want. So once you have done that, you can go ahead and trace out your rectangle and then we can go ahead and cut out that piece. So if you have a paper trimmer that you can pick up your blade and drop it where you want, otherwise use an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. Or if you want to make things super easy on yourself, you can always just cut in from the side. Because once we adhere this onto the front of our box, it's all going to be one piece and we'll be doing some embellishing and things over it anyway. So you'll barely be able to notice that little cut. So just depending on how you want to do it, go ahead and cut out your inside. I'm just keeping it easy. And then with this piece, you're going to hold this to the side because we'll be using this on our accordion mini album later. So make sure not to throw that away. And then once you've got this piece cut out, you can kind of measure to see how it's looking on your box. We're going to be adhering down our piece that we just cut out onto our matchbook box. So we just want to center our piece around our f opening, our window. So once it looks like everything is nice and centered, You can go ahead and take your bone folder and then just making sure you're applying some pressure underneath your box as well and burnish that down. You can see there is an extra space up here, but we'll be adding a nice little border. From Unicorn Fantasy, we're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be three inches by eight inches. And these are going to be get, go on the side and we want them to be lined up with the front of our box piece. So just have it be nice in the center on the right and left hand side and then try to line it up with the front of your box. And then we'll do the same for the other side. Stars aligned. We have two pieces that have been cut to be three inches by three quarters of an inch. And those have been scalloped as well. And then we have one piece that's cut to six and a quarter by three and a quarter, or three by four inches. And that's scalloped as well. And then those will just adhere onto the top front and sides. Step six, Dreamland, we are gonna cut one piece to be six and a quarter by eight inches. And then we're gonna have two pieces that are gonna be three by eight. So add adhesive to the back sides of these and then they're gonna slip into our box, giving us that really nice shadow box nighttime scene. So I've got my first piece in place. 
and just go ahead and burnish that down. Next, I'm going to take my largest piece and making sure that this is nice and center. And then last, we're going to take the last side strip. So there you have it, looking like a beautiful nighttime scene. Step seven, we're going to flip over the bottom part of our box. And we'll have the hollow side up. And then we're going to just open up our claw feet. These are so much fun to use on a variety of different projects and just really add a nice polished look. So taking a heavy duty liquid adhesive, you could use hot glue, uh, glossy accents works great. E6000 also does the trick. We are going to put some adhesive onto the corners and the inside of our leg. And then since this is flipped over, I'm just going to go ahead and hold this down. So you can see where the claw foot and the box touch each other is where you want to put your adhesive. So on the back side of this base and then just the edges here. And then if you just hold it in place for about 60 seconds, it'll give it a nice stable fill. And then you can move on to your next three feet. And then you'll want to go ahead and once you have all four of these feet on, go ahead and put this to the side and let it dry for at least half an hour. But the longer you dry, let it dry, the, the better. Step eight, we're going to cut a piece of ivory cardstock to be eight and three quarters inches by five and a half. And then we are going to score this on the half inch mark on all four sides. So half inch and then rotate half inch rotate and once we've done all four sides then we're going to do another score at one inch. So measuring at one inch, rotate one inch. And now that I've scored at a half inch and one inch on all four sides, you should have your piece looking like this. Next, we are gonna be cutting out these corners. So we'll be just cutting out these three corners on all four sides. So we'll be cutting this little L shape out of all of our corners. Next, we're going to cut a slit. So just on the short sides of our box, we are going to be cutting a slight little V slit on this small little square that we have left. So cut on the edge and then just at a slight angle we will cut a little V out on all of these. So cut on our short side, and then from our little square section, we'll be cutting out just a little triangle. So then it should look like this. Step 10, we are going to be folding on all of our score lines, having them all just go in the same direction is starting to form our lid for the top of our 
dreamy display box. Like so. And then we are going to be taking our cute little corner tabs and those will adhere onto our box like so, making sure we're forming some nice 45 degree angle corners. And then once it's dried, then you can start to just work around. All of our corner tabs have been adhered. Just add some adhesive to all four of our little panels and adhere into the inside of the box. And then just make sure everything is nice and crisp. If there's any excess glue, you just take a wet towel and a damp towel and make sure to clear that out. And then now we have created a nice little lid that's gonna go on the top of our box. Step 11, we're taking Slumber C. It's been cut to six and a half by three and a quarter. And this is going to just go right on top of our DIY box topper. And just going to burnish it down on the inside of my lid, making sure not to crush my side panels. Like so. From stars aligned, we're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be eight inches by three eighths and two pieces that will be three and three eighths by three eighths. So now we are going to adhere those yellow strips down. So I'm taking my two eight inch long strips and then finding a nice center placement. And then I'm just going to pull my excess onto the smaller side panels. So we'll do the same with both sides. And then we'll get our other large eight inch strip and do the same with this one. And then once you have that adhered down, then we'll just take our short strips and match those up perfectly like so. So now your yellow strips should go all the way around like this. Now from our die cut assortment, we're going to find our moon banner and we are just going to cut that apart, moving out our moon piece. And now with our little banner elements, we are going to glue these on top of our lid. In the center, leaving about an inch maybe an inch and a quarter of space. Just gonna clean up that excess. And from our chipboard pack, we are going to take out our little moon tag. You can see that this circle does pop out if you wish, but we are gonna leave it intact. And then this is just going to adhere right over the center. Step 13, we're going to take the base of our box and then five butterflies from your die cut assortments, three little circles and this cute little twinkle chipboard. And we're just going to be decorating the base. And of course, because our die cut assortments are double sided, if you would like to use the other side, feel free to make it more colorful and mix it up by doing that. But we'll be using, on our example, all the dark blue butterflies. So, I want my butterfly wings to be a little bit popping off my box, so I'm going to just adhere the base of my largest cut out butterfly and this is just going to go down towards the corner the right hand corner 
like so. Next, I'm going to take this twinkle chipboard. And adhere it just next to our butterfly we've adhered down. And then once you've adhered all your pieces on, it should look something like this where our butterfly wings are in motion with a little bit of flight. We've got some chipboard pieces down. All right, so now we are going to embellish our display box piece. And from our die cut embellishments, our die cut assortments, we're gonna take out this clock, this moonbeams dance banner, and then one, two, three, four flourishes. And then from our chipboard, we're gonna take out this nice sentiment sail away. And then we are going to start adhering down our different die cut elements on step 14. So a lot of this is gonna be overhanging onto the window and then also off to the side. So I just put some adhesive down on my circle part and now I'm just going to let this dry nicely here. So you can see it's nicely onto the left hand side. And then now I'm going to take some of these flourishes and just start to decorate. So using a liquid adhesive for this is best to try to get onto these little fine pieces. So once you've added those flourishes, now we can add our banner. And just to add a little extra fun dimension, I added some foam adhesives on the back side of my banner. So you can choose to do that if you'd like. And then on the back side of our large chipboard, I've just added a bit of tape. That way our uh, piece, our, since this is a frame, it won't come through. But, you know, if you always want to add in your own sentiment, maybe uh, whoever's room this is going to go in, it would be a great place to put their name down there. That would be a fun idea. And then I'm just going to add some liquid adhesive to the bottom of this chipboard frame. And this is going to go nicely in the center of our display box. So now we still have a nice window area, so any of that light could come out if you're choosing to use this as a nightlight, or it would be a great display for photos, or you're that coordinating mini that we're going to create. For the last step, we are going to take some heavy-duty liquid adhesive. You could also use some uh, a hot glue gun and just add it to the bottom ridge. And then that's just going to adhere down just on the center of our box base. So just find that center and adhere it down and wipe off any excess adhesive. And then go ahead and let this dry. So we're all done with our box and you should have a beautiful home decor masterpiece like this. Take off that lid and you can see we've got space for photos, mini album, or your lights. We hope you enjoyed creating this home decor piece as much as we did. Be sure to share your projects using that hashtag club G45. And thanks so much. Happy paper crafting.